The Wilco Sports Power Hour features Williamson County High School Athletics. The show is hosted by Charles Pulliam of the Williamson Herald and Garth Bolden of Gateway Tyrant Service in Franklin. The live broadcast every week is brought to you by Tim Thompson Premier Realtors and aired on location at Tony's Eat and Drink in Franklin. And we are live at Tony's Eat and Drink. I'm Garth Bolden of Gateway Tire. I'm joined by my co-host Charles Pulliam of the Williamson Herald. And uh, we're ready to kick things off tonight. Uh, and before we do so, we had Friday night lights start up. Friday night. It's been a busy weekend. That's the thing, Garth. Uh, we had, we had Saturday night 50. lights. We had Friday and Saturday, opening week, uh, pretty special. Lots of great games here. Lots of big coverage throughout here. And we're just we're in it now. There's that's, so much happening. That's right. So uh, before we start off, uh, I'll let you go ahead and pay the bills. Uh, <laughs> so go ahead and lead off our sponsors. Well, again, we do this in, uh, in, in grouping here. Again, this is the Wilco Sports Power Hour. We're live here at Tony's Eat and Drink in Franklin. We're here every Monday night. Got a nice one lined up here. We're going to talk a little football, talk a little cross-country running. But our great sponsors, the Tim Thompson Premier Realtors Wilco Sports Power Hour, brought to you by Gateway Tire and Service, Toyota of Cool Springs, Stonegate Homes, Matthews Team Sports, Trucking for a Cure, Tennessee, Southern Trophy, and John Mayer Builders. And, of course, the Gateway Tire and Service, Garth Bolden, Williamson Herald, myself here. So uh, I tell you, it's, uh, it's a nice little setup we got here, and we're always trying more and trying to do a little bit more here, too. You can find us on Spotify and other uh, podcast software out there as well, too. So we're excited about some of the things we can do now. Yeah, new, new this year is the podcast. So, uh, you know, we'll be able to break that down into segments. Uh, and see some of the uh, athletes, uh, coaches uh, from the schools. Uh, so that's just another uh, big thing that we're able to add this year, and we're excited about that. But, uh, you know, let's talk about uh, what you saw Friday night. You, had, you, you were at the Franklin Centennial game. Uh, Franklin can't come out victorious in overtime. Uh, what about the setting? T- tell me, tell me oh, a little man. bit about the setting Fantastic Friday Fantastic atmosphere. I actually almost – thought about trying to get joe williams here i think i might bring him next week potentially because we might have some uh some some friends coming along from Mm -hmm. representing that game here but again the battle of franklin at franklin high packed stadium i mean you know that howard gamble always uh brings a crowd there but when you got centennial coming in it was it was special and it came right down to the final play in overtime um it was it was a wild finish well you know (laughs) We'll have to give a shout-out to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> on the panel, you and I were on the only two that picked Franklin to win mm-hmm, that game. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we can pat each other on the back on that one. Yeah, not to, nothing to it. 22-21 the final. Sean Gacka uh, gets a, a tough snap to handle, ends up having to pick it up, throw a two-point conversion for the win in overtime. I mean, nothing to it, just like you draw it up strangely something that they practice we had coach adkins on the first show last week coach josh adkins the new new fresh face there on campus since january he talked a lot about doing the little things they prepared for literally everything like screwing up a snap and uh hey it worked (laughs) well i was really impressed uh with coach last week showing you know showing up and talking about some of the things about how he's holding the players accountable now and you know I don't, I don't think that's going to be their only W this year. Uh, I think they're going to play everyone tough and, and do really well. Charles, what was your surprise Friday night? Um, I think really kind of looking into across the realm here, I was a little taken aback from the East Hickman Fairview game more than anything there. I thought Fairview, we've talked to Coach Chris Hughes. He's got a great group coming back there, a lot of size. He's not used to having bigger players there, too. East Hickman came, uh, came in and was able to spoil that one, that opener there. And that one kind of caught me a little off guard. Um, I was pretty excited to hear about Coach Hester's win all the way in East Tennessee, too. That was one we had talked about quite a bit because right. that is a big matchup. You're going against the eight, nine-time defending state champs there in Alcoa. And uh, the guys get it done. And they did it with that two-quarterback setup there. So Femi Balboa... Uh, Ba- Babaloa. Babaloa. There we go. Uh, Babaloa. Ends up throwing for a touchdown. Did fine. Went three of six, about 92 yards, rushed a couple times. But it was Maverick Chance that did most of the work there 
under center for Coach Hester. So that was kind of interesting. Um, ended up running in three scores, I think, too. But a huge win for the Raptors to get some of that momentum going because, you know, they're a favored team in 6A. Yeah, and, and, and the score, you know, they, they handed Alcoa pretty heavily. I mean, that wasn't a close game. Uh, and, you know, you're right. It's tough to make a two-quarterback scheme work. Uh, but obviously the other night uh, it worked mm -hmm. very well for them. Um, that's a long haul to go to East Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, and especially to go up against Alcoa. Alcoa defeated Ravenwood last year, uh, and they returned the favor visiting Alcoa. So huge win. I was, I was surprised. Uh, I picked Ravenwood, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I was really surprised at the score. I, I didn't expect it for them to run away with it as much as they did. So uh, some big games this coming Friday night. I'm sure you'll be out and about as usual. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, you know, with that being said, I right. guess let's dive right into one of the uh, victors uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Friday night. Well, that would we, be we the didn't Page talk Patriots. Particularly about this one because we got to hear a little insight. So kind of excited here, but. We can get Coach, uh, Coach Rathbone to come on Just up here and join us. Just as he gets his wings, he I gets know. to come up here and uh, join us. Gotta, they needed time yeah. to cool off anyway. He, <laughs> yeah. probably, he probably got it full with hot sauce. Again, Coach Charles Rathbone of Page High School joining us here on the Wilco Sports Power Hour. Uh, Coach Rathbone and the Patriots opening up uh, the new campaign with the win at home against Giles County in shutout fashion. You know that always makes a coach happy when uh, the other team's not scoring any points. Coach, tell us about uh, Friday night. Well, I mean, our, our defense played really, really well. They kind of lived up to their billing that we feel like we're going to have a really good defense this year. Uh, offense played surprisingly better than we thought. You know, we had a lot of guys making their first start. William uh, Weebush obviously played really, really well, running the ball, throwing the ball, uh, running the offense efficiently. I think we scored four out of six drives. Uh, so, I mean, you know, Giles County's whole game plan was to come in and hold the ball, don't give it back to us, milk the clock, and – you know, the score could have been a lot worse. We had two uh, turnovers that we returned for touchdowns that they said was a f not a fumble or not an incomplete pass, which go back on film, they were. We had uh, Mitchell Grand Jean break a long touchdown run. They caught him out of bounds, and I think uh, my TV 30 said he was in bounds. They had an angle where he was in bounds. So those things are going to happen. We just got to play through them. So I was really proud of the guys. You know, the shutout's great. You know, scoring on four or six is great, but playing through those things that we should have earned you know, I was really proud of them. That shows a lot of maturity. So, Coach, coming out of the gate, um, you've got a new quarterback this year, William Weebush, heck of an athlete, uh, played safety uh, last year for you and then moved over to quarterback this year. Did, did you expect the offense to click? I mean, you guys were clicking Friday night that I saw, what I saw on TV. You looked like you were clicking. Did you expect that or have you been, you know, have you been seeing the – camaraderie on the offensive side this season already in practice no we we really didn't expect it to be honest with you you know i'm a pessimist at heart and we really put the guys in some bad situations in the uh preseason we didn't let them play a whole lot of snaps we wanted to keep them fresh and william made some plays that you know he just made them with his feet they were kind of you know off the cuff plays that were not really part of the offense that he turned into big plays and he has that ability to do that all the time you know, so we're, we're confident with our offensive line. We think Williams will be fine. We've got to find us a running back, and all three of the running backs that played Friday night played really, really well. So, I mean, uh, that was a pleasant surprise. But I think we'll get better, and hopefully we'll, we'll peak at the right time when the playoffs roll around. So the defense is definitely your strength, no, no doubt about it. I mean, you look at your roster, and you guys really, really have a lot of experience on the defensive side of the football. How are you going to – resolve the the running back do you just let that play out i mean and, and see who has the hot hand that night or how, how do you how do you accomplish that as a coach well i mean you know if you look at our defense i mean you got you got eric a louisville commit you got ains uh wisconsin commit they're both off the edge so i mean we want teams to try to run off the edge against us and then you got william a memphis commit down the middle so i mean if I'm on our defense, I'm wanting to play at interior. So, I mean, I want to be an inside linebacker or a defensive lineman. As far as the running backs, I mean, I think you hit it right on the head. We're going to play by committee. We're going to rotate them. We're going to keep them fresh. we got a little freshman, Isaac Odie, that played really well the other night. 
Uh, Cole Brown, Colt Brown played really well, and then we moved Mitchell Grandjean, who's the backup quarterback. He's an elite athlete. We moved him to uh, running back, and you know he looked really well. So I mean, we're just gonna have to move those guys around and, and take the hot hand. And if they're all stay hot, then maybe move one of those out to slot, and that allows us to be a little bit deeper on defense as well. Coach, when you uh, think about just all the buildup that goes into coming into week one and having that opportunity to finally get back out there again, just just coming into it. Just explain that that atmosphere, that that fun part of just, hey, Friday nights are back. We were out there. All the boys are out there. Just explain that that atmosphere of coming back out to Rudderville and what it what what kind of comes about with that. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool to go out to the go out to the field and see the student section packed all the way up to the top. And and our parents put in so much work, so much effort. Uh, volunteer so much time and put in so much money into bringing the atmosphere that it that it's become. I mean, just everything that they do and seeing all of it come together under one night and it had its hiccups and and, uh, and some things like that. But I mean, just seeing the whole community come together, student body, parents, fans, everybody come together and putting it together and then executing and obviously getting a win. That's to top it off. So it's a it's a great place to play. Great great atmosphere and. We, I don't think they disappointed Friday night. Now, before we uh, kind of talk a little more specifics here, let's let's get a little preview of, of this coming week here. Because, again, we get an all-county matchup here. You get Independence here. This is a, a, this was a, a f exciting game last week. But any time you get any of these county teams together, there's a lot of prideful uh, pride on the line there. Um, kind of break down that game, some of the things you're expecting to see from uh, this Independence team. Well, you know, I mean, they, they've had our number. They, they beat us. They're the only team to beat us in the last three years at home. <clears throat> they, uh, they're very quick on defense. Of course, Coach Stidham likes to run the option. They got a quarterback at 6'6 that can sling the ball around, but we think they're going to stick to their option and run the ball. But their defense has given us problems in the past. They moved their front. They moved the linebackers. They like to the blitz. So we're going to have to be on top of our game on the offensive line wise as far as picking up the blitz and being able to give our quarterback time to throw the ball. That was ultimately our issue last year was we were not able to do that. And uh, we struggled. I mean, our defense did everything in the world to give us that game last year. They played extremely well. And uh, we just did not play well offensively. And, and uh, that was unfortunate. So hopefully we can play a little bit better offensively, control the clock, control the game, and, and get the ball in our playmakers and hopefully score some points. Now, one of our, our topics tonight, Coach, is pretty fun because, uh, well, I think you know this. You know all your guys so well here, but you know this young man in particular very well here. Um, Garth, this is something when we get to do this, it's not very often we're giving out awards, and it's a father-son setup in the coaching style here. But Coach Rathbone's son, Jacob, is the latest and first of the school year's winners here for our Stonegate Homes Heart of the Team Award winner. Um, very excited to give that to Jacob. That's right. Coach, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about this young man here. Again, coming in, he's, he had a, such a fantastic uh, impact on this team from day one here. Now a junior coming in, I think he's the reigning lineman of the year. You know a little bit about this position as well, too, but what's, what's, this, what's this like? Walk us through this. Well, you know, I mean, to start with, I mean, we've been lucky and blessed to play a lot of freshmen over the last couple of years, and you, you really can't do that without guys like – like Hazard and Weebush and Ains and those older guys that really mentor those. You know, I mean, Knight's walking in the door right now. He's another one that's played since his freshman year. So, I mean, that Jake was uh, – Jake and these young guys were blessed to have those guys around them to kind of help them lead the way. You know, I could tell you story after story about Jake from the days when we had to powder his behind and changing his diaper. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. My, my, my best memories of him is I can remember him coming to practice with me and he would pull out the dummies and – He'd stack them up and he'd climb up on a ladder and jump up on them because he is, you know, like a people's elbow because he is a big WWE fan. But just watching him grow, he's a, he's a great kid. I walk down the hallway and, and every one of his teachers will talk about him, about how, what a pleasant kid he is. He stays on top of his work. Not the greatest in math, but, I mean, he's just a, a respectful kid that, uh, that works extremely hard. There's not a harder worker on the team than Jacob. He kills it in the weight room. He'll run his sprints as fast as he can, which is not very fast, but he'll run them as fast as he can. And he'll, he'll play wherever. You know, this week we're moving him somewhere different because of injury, and he's a smart football player that, that does everything we ask, and you can't really ask for much more than that. Well, Coach, I think it's only fitting coming right out of the gate that we're able 
to recognize with the Stonegate Heart of the Team Award is a young man that, you're right, he's lived it. I mean, he's been around it all of his life and works hard and appreciates the game and is a respectful young man. So I, I'm, I'm thankful that we're able right out of the gate to recognize him. I mean, you've been on this show a lot with us, and now we get to recognize your young, your young son. I know, and he comes with me to every one of these things because he loves the food here at Tony's. So, I mean, he's eating up my paycheck. But uh, he, he, he's a good kid. I'm, I'm anxious to see if you can get more than two words out of him. He don't talk a whole lot. Uh, we better get some. We better get get him to talk. He might tell us some things about you. But uh, so, you may not have a bedroom to sleep in tonight too. <laughs> is, but is he, he playing both sides of the football this year for you? Yeah, he he is. He's playing kind of Ronan's old position, the four I, and he started at left tackle for us last week, um, and that goes into you know. To him, he's he's really worked hard to change his body and and cut some of that fat and and make it into a more of a quick twitch type of athlete to where he can kick slide and you know he does a good job did a good job last week of protecting the blind side and you know he's a he's going he's going to project at a guard center at the next level so we I like him at guard but uh, Coach Wolf seems to think he's our best uh, left tackle so we put him there. You just brought up a point right there that leads to a, a good question. Scott Wells joined you this year, um, you know, played for the Packers for years. To, for him to join your staff and coach your, your line, I wouldn't, couldn't think of a better personnel option to have to teach your son uh, what it's going to take to go to the next level. Uh, how, did, how did that occur? How did you get Coach Wells? So Coach Wells' son was an eighth grader last year. So he's a freshman this year, and we kind of just uh, met, and there was a parent that put me in touch with him, and you know he he wanted to get back into coaching after BA, so we we worked it out. And, you know, I guess the biggest compliment that Coach Wolf has gotten is Coach Wells coming in and saying there's not much else I could teach these kids, but I can add too. You know, so that tells you what a job Coach uh, Wolf has done over the years, and and having Coach Wells there as a guy to bounce things off of. Unfortunately, he's not really getting to work with Jake a whole lot right now because he's working with the inside guys, and Wolf's taking the outside guys. But just having him around, his experience around, is good for all these kids. Yeah, they can, they can definitely bounce questions off of them because, you know, you look across your roster, you've got a lot of kids going to that next level and just someone there that can say, hey, Coach, because, you know, I guess he's probably a little bit younger than you, Coach Wells, wouldn't he be? Everybody's a little bit younger than I am. <laughs> I think I'm older than you. <laughs> well, yeah, but you're not at Paige. <laughs> I've got a page hat, though. I, I should have brought you another one. We got I, some good ones made. Well, I would wear it. I got you next time. It's, it's in my it's in my Yukon, as a matter of fact. You know, my my, right. my dad lives in Oregon. He's wearing page gear. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Hey, They're hey, all over. That, that's that's a good stuff. <laughs> we're we're going to take a trip up to Alaska one day. Yeah, oh, I'm going yeah. there. I'm going oh, there yeah. next month, Coach. We we were planning a trip this spring, and it kind of fell through. So we probably won't go this year, but definitely maybe next year. Well, Coach, one of the things that uh, you think about. Last year, for example, this award for this team we gave to uh, a pretty special young man in Eric Hazard who's here tonight in support, of course. Um, when you think about embodying that, that heart of the team award, and I know this is probably going to be even a little, a little tough because we get to talk about your son in that setup there, but tell us a little bit about specifically what you've kind of seen from him in a leadership role and what he kind of does for this team in that kind of setting a little bit too. Yeah, and like I said earlier, he couldn't ask for a better example than Eric Hazard. And to me, it's, it's a guy that really does what is needed. You know, everybody has that ego, and they want to be the ball carrier or the quarterback or, or something, the glory position is going to get the write-ups. And Jake's one of those kids that will do whatever the team needs. He puts the team first. He'll play center, guard, tackle. He'll play D-line, wherever, wherever we need him, he will play. And basically, he's on the D-line to eat up blocks to free up Hazard. And you know that's a that's a very important position. You know you got to be big, you got to be strong, you got to be physical, and uh, you know he's all those things. And he, he puts the team first. Just an incredible attitude. He comes to work. He, when he gets home, he make a plane a little bit. But that's where you know I told you all a long time ago. I got to be good at separating dad from football. And when he gets home, I let him whine and cry. But uh, once we get back to the school, he's ready to go and he does whatever we ask. And he works extremely hard. I'm proud of him for that. You know, and, and we're lucky at Page to have a lot of those guys. We really do. I mean, you can look around this room now. I mean, Weebush could have got it. Ackerman, Knight, Sean, 
they all put in this work, and we're just blessed to have a lot of good guys, and Jake's one of them. Well, I'm sure this won't be the last time you guys will be back here with our show, but I've got a, I've got a question that I don't know if you've been asked this before, but when these young men came in earlier, you mentioned that a number of your players started playing as freshmen. Last week, I flipped through the media guide while, during the show, and a lot of these teams don't even have freshmen listed on their as their rosters. How – I mean, I, I scratched my head thinking, okay, how did Paige start playing so many freshmen? How did that happen? Well, because, because one, the freshmen were talented uh, that came in. They, they could play at that level. They're smart football players. And they were surrounded by guys that kind of built them up and took care of them and taught them the, the you know, I don't want to say the Patriot way because that sounds corny. Everybody's got that. But, it, but taught them how to be varsity players. You know, a varsity player, you can't be immature. You can't be silly. You can't goof off in the locker room. You got to be in tune on the, on the practice field. You got to learn mentally on the practice field. You got to do the little things that make you a varsity player. And all the guys we've had that play freshmen, and we got three that are dressing out with us this year. Every one of these guys in this room right now will surround them and, and kind of help them through their normal day. It's not when you walk off to a practice field, they're done. They're, it's not, that's not it. They'll see them in the hallways. They'll talk to them in the hallways. They'll lift them up. If they fumble the ball, they'll lift them up and say, listen, I mean, that's going to happen. So they work very hard to make sure that these kids are included on part of the team and, and they feel comfortable and they, they, they come out there and they perform for us and they, they perform well. Well, it almost seems like an exception to the rule based on what I was looking at the other night. And I commend you for, A, recognizing good athletes, going ahead and putting them in the fold and letting them learn. That's obviously been very successful for you guys because of the success that you've had over the last several years. And, and this year, you're loaded. I mean, you're absolutely loaded with talent that if, you know, they may be young men, but they're – they're seasoned veterans out on the football field. And they're guys that care about their teammates and the sport. They want to get better. They want to, they want to win every game. They want, to, they want to compete. They love competing. But they also understand if we do slip up and lose, we've got to come back and play harder next week. We've got to learn from it. So and I, I believe these guys, and I think they will do that. And I'm, I'm anxious to see what they accomplish this year. It's, it's, you know, going back to the state four straight years of four different quarterbacks, I don't know if that's been done. That's hard to do, and that's what we're trying to do this year. Um, Coach, I think with this opportunity here, I'm going to give you one more maybe story if you could tell us a little bit about this young man we're going to bring up here in just a moment here. But before we bring him up to chat, I just wanted to, hey, the mic's yours. Tell us uh, maybe a, a Jake story of some sort here. Well, I, I really don't have any bad stories about him he's always been a respectful kid i mean i guess the uh, funniest thing i can get on him right now is that he's in love you know he's, he's got his first love and he, he, he's uh you know so he, he he's with her more than he's with me and mom so i promise you that so i mean he's uh i'm a little concerned about that but at least she's a good girl <laughs> coach we uh, we appreciate you taking the time of course always a pleasure to coach you uh, host you here coach charles rathbone of page high school here Thank you so much, Coach. Thanks for it, it's, it's only fitting in, in all seriousness that we start this season out of having Paige in the house. I mean, it, it really is. We've kind of ended each we, season we, with these we boys, We definitely we? ended it. I don't know if we yeah. began the season maybe with once, Paige. Maybe, maybe once. once yeah. But anyway, they're, they're a great – group of young men, great families. We have uh, Paul and Christy Huff in the house, the sponsors of Stonegate Homes, and, and they always they always bring a big crowd, Paige does. And we thank, we thank Paige for that, and we really do. But Jacob, Jake, bring that curly hair on up here. Let's get you on the stage. Again, this is Jake Rathbone of Paige High School, our latest Stonegate Homes Heart of the Team Award winner. Uh, Jacob, 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 Jake, what do you want us to go by here, bud? Jacob's fine. Jacob's fine. I like it. I like it. Hey, um, let's go back to Friday night, opening night. You guys uh, pick out a shutout win. I think uh, thinking line-wise here, we almost we rack up nearly 200 yards of rushing. Uh, what was going right? How would you guys kick off the season with a big W? 
Well, first off, I want to say thank you for having me. And um, second, to answer your question, I feel like we just have that chemistry this year. We got um, Jordan Curl, who transferred in from Centennial. Um, AJ, three-year starter. And then um, we got some younger guys that complement the older guys really well. So the older guys have just been helping the younger guys pretty um, get a get a foot in the game and learn the playbooks and everything, learn the combos, and just get us started really well. I like it. I like it. Thinking of, of this team's dynamic, take us, uh, compare this group a little bit to last year and maybe the year before a little bit too. What have, what are you seeing? What are some big strengths that you really like? And what's, what's that camaraderie kind of like too? Uh, we're definitely bigger than last year. We are pretty huge this year. Um, losing Ronan obviously hurts. Um, you can't replace the kind of guy like that, but I think uh, guys have stepped up to kind of fill that spot pretty well. Um, a lot of the younger guys have stepped up very well to um, fill those spots that we need and help kind of form our way around the line. Okay. This, this group here, tell us a little bit about who's all here. I mean, obviously you got some great supporters here, but point some guys out. Tell us who's in support, man. Uh, we've obviously got Eric Hazard, uh, got Big Mac, got Tyson, Caden, Wee Bush, quarterback, uh, Colt Brown. Then we got Knight, who just got his offer from UNA. Then we got Sean and uh, Grace Chisholm and Colin Mulek. I think this seems like a pretty good crew. We like this, yeah? Yeah. All right. Tell us uh, the, the setup here on the, on the line here, in the trenches. All the dirty work's done here. This is something that I know you've, you've been around. You've grown up in it. Um, tell us about this position and playing a little bit everywhere on that line for that matter, too. Because as, you, as your coach said, as your dad said, you're so versatile being plugged in to just about everywhere. So last year, Ronan went down, so I had to step in at tackle, which at first that was a little challenging because going against faster guys uh, – have always been my like weaker point, but I stepped up with Eric and we've worked on a uh, pass pro a lot. So he's helped out a lot against faster guys and I've just improved that, that aspect of my game. Um, and then in my opinion, it's probably a rough take, but tackle is a little bit easier to guard than guard to me. Um, I feel like guards harder cause you're going up against guys that have a bunch of different aspects and then uh, tackle, I feel like you only got to watch the outside, so that's pretty easy for me to do. And, of course, going up against the best rusher in state every day in practice makes it that much easier. You would be talking about Hazard over there who's feeling his face right now, correct? Yeah, he's trying to get a little bigger. Well, so your dad mentioned uh, that, you're, that you changed your body a little bit. What, do you, what are you having to do? Are you, is it nutrition? Is it in the weight room? What are you, what are you working on to, to get yourself, you know, physically prepared for that next level? So a bunch of guys at Page go to this guy, this workout trainer, Bryce, and we go three, four, five times a week, and we just hit the gym hard. They're rough workouts, but they make us better in the end, and then – Obviously, just dieting, just trying to work on what I eat, but that's pretty much it. Well, I've got to ask this question. How many times, you know, in the last few years can you think of that you've been riding in the vehicle with your dad that you really would just like to say, Dad, I don't agree with the way you, the way you handled that. How many times has that happened? I mean, be truthful with us. I mean, probably a bunch of times, but we, we disagree on football, but we get along a lot of the time, and in the end, he's right. I mean, I, he's my coach, and i got to listen to him. He is the head coach and done a mighty fine job with that, but uh, he, mentioned, he mentioned that he's a pessimist. Do you think he's a pessimist too much? I think we both are, to be honest. Oh, really? Well, you're talking more than he said you would, so that's – you proved him wrong on that. Trying to be out there. <laughs> um, that, that relationship, Jacob, we've, we've talked about it a couple times prior to a little bit. But just, you know, growing up football with dad, that kind of thing, kind of take us back even, even before playing days a little bit and just what it was like having, having dad as coach and, and growing up in that kind of setting. 
Growing up, I loved to be around that culture. I've been I've been with it ever since I was little. I I knew all the coaches coming in, so that made uh, the transition process a lot easier. Um, I already knew most of the players coming in, and um, it's just a great environment to grow up around. Um, it's just amazing. When you think of uh, post Friday nights or Saturday mornings or things like that, walk us through some of the uh, the at home breakdowns. Or do you guys? straight up cut off like hey this talks for practice only or school only i mean how do you guys uh, maintain the father-son relationship and the coach-son relationship and how's that just kind of work so we have a rule at home that we don't talk about football unless i bring it up but usually i bring it up a lot so i'll come running downstairs on saturday morning and we'll watch film together we'll break it down um put it put together some highlights and to see how the team did and what I need to fix. Garth, I know you uh, got to coach some of your sons in basketball and that kind of setting there. When it comes to, you know, being being dad and being coach at the same time, I mean, what what's what's it kind of like? How do, how do you manage those kind of settings? Well, I didn't have a shutoff rule like uh, Coach Rathbone uh, has, but I'll have to say that, you know, at the end of the day, um, I'm sure, you know, Coach, Coach Rathbone looks at it as that's my son. I'm proud of him uh, for the type of individual that he's grown into be. You take football aside from that, and, you know, it becomes a parent thing that they're smiling ear for ear uh, about the young man that he's become. I, I, I have great sons. I'm proud of my boys, but I – I just couldn't I couldn't turn it off like that. I really couldn't and it's it's hard and I'd, I admire Jacob to sit here and say that we have this rule but I'm the one that that addresses it which you know if you really think about that that means Jacob is wanting to learn. I mean so he comes and asks questions he's wanting to learn about it and that's rare. That's rare because most most coaches kids they want to get away from it. And so for Jacob to do that, I applaud you, young man. I, I really do. I, I find that very interesting. And, and it says a lot about your relationship with your mom and dad uh, uh, that, that, they, that they have that rule. You know, one of the things, too, Jacob here thinking is coming in as that, that young freshman, having to make an impact, earn your, earn your keep right out of the gate here. That's something Coach talked about a little bit about how Younger guys are accepted into the program here. The camaraderie's right there. You guys are building each other up. There's three freshmen, of course, on the team this year. That kind of setup there. What 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 is it about that that page setup there of bringing in younger guys, making impact as that younger guy, and just you know building that that kind of culture at Page? So coming in my freshman year, I had Ronan that really stepped up and took a leader role and uh, kind of taught me the ways of Paige. So the way I look at it, I look at it, I don't try to be Ronan, but I try to take that steps like he did and try to help the, the upcoming freshman like he did to me. And then on defense, Eric helped me tremendously my sophomore year when I was learning how to play defense. And they both just stepped up big time and made an influence on my high school career. The, uh, the consistency we're seeing here about Page football, you guys are, are that team that draws out the best of any opponent at any time. How do you manage that kind of that pressure? I mean, there's a lot that comes with being one of the teams to beat that everybody wants to beat on top of that, too. How do you stay focused? How do you mo stay motivated? Um, I don't really look at it as pressure. I look at it as a blessing that we're able to come out each week and um, – kind of just be that team that people want to be and we're not going to go easy on you any week of the the year and we're just going to we're going to make it a game no matter what there's a a matchup an all Williamson County matchup coming up here this week against Independence here it's been it's one of those you know we're throughout the county we just you know we were talking big about the Franklin Centennial one again there's not a region vibe to that but it is still just full of pride because these are Williamson County matchups so when you get an independence team here that has had some success against you guys here too uh, what are some of the expectations for Friday um, I think if you ask any of these guys out here Andy is always one of our biggest regrets of the year we we always feel like we have the talent to beat them but um, 
we always we've been coming up short the last couple of years. This year we look to make a difference, and we feel like we have the team that matches them. And this is going to be the year that we beat them. So, what would be the game that you guys circled? Is this is this one of those games that you guys have circled to say, okay, we we've got this? Um, tell tell us a little bit about that. When you look at your schedule, which 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 is the revenge game? Is this one of them? Uh, I think they're all big games to us, but I feel like this is definitely one that is very important to us. We um, we coming up short the last couple of years has left a, left a bad taste in our mouth, and we want we want to make it right and set the story straight. I think you guys have definitely uh, got the talent to get it done this year. I really do, and I would say I'd say Indy's uh, not looking forward to playing you guys. Kind of wrapping things up here a little bit, uh, we we gave Dad the opportunity to kind of mention some stories about you, of course, too. And, and he was doing those little quips, you know. He always like, well, you know, he wasn't the fastest or something like that. He always has something a little extra underneath the breath. But with th that said, being, uh, being the coach's son, being playing for him, describe a little bit about what it's like in uh, Friday night huddles, things like that. Knowing, uh, knowing dad's making the calls and just what that what that is like on the field. So I think he was taking those shots because he's a little mad that he's not the tallest in the family anymore. And um, but back to the huddle thing, uh, I feel like I, I feel like there's no better man to trust in Williamson County or even the state of Tennessee in that mo that matter. He is uh, my full trust in his coaching plays play calls. So I feel like there's. I don't really think about it too much because I trust him and, and trust him to make the right calls. How would you describe his his coaching style? I guess what would you what would you say? What are some words to come to mind to describe him as a coach? Um, I feel like he definitely knows the offensive line and he definitely sees the offensive line and understands what we go through, but he also understands the skill positions very well. Um, I feel like he picks coaches that, like, compliment him very well. And, um, yeah, I feel, I feel like he is a great coach. I've got a word, integrity. I think your dad's a man of high integrity. I really do. And I think he expects that out of his players as well. It's one thing I have really, really a lot of admiration for you guys at, uh, at Page is the integrity that – that's passed along from the coaches down to the players. So, you know, uh, you missed on that one. But I think you guys, I think you guys really, really have a, have a coach that you can look up to outside of the football field. I really do. Uh, another thing that, uh, that comes to my mind instantly when I think about him is a uh, man of God. He, um, he always puts God first no matter what, and he preaches that to his kids. And um, I do agree with the integrity thing. That's one of his biggest things. He wants to make a difference. He truly cares about his players and not just winning football games. Winning football games is important, but he always puts that second when it comes to making a difference in people's lives. Well, as we uh, wind down here, Jacob, give us uh, a little bit of advice here maybe for some of those younger guys, some of those other players out there in terms of making an impact for a team, being a, a heart of the team like this. Tell us a little bit about what you think other kids can do to uh, to earn awards and earn recognition like this and do the best they can for said teams? I feel like you just got to want it. You you got to love the game of football to make a difference. And you got to – if you don't truly love it, football is not the game for you. But also um, keeping your mind, integrity is everything. And what you do off the field is just as important what you do on the field. And – Making a difference, a small difference in people's lives could go a long way. And there's. Well said, young man. Well said, Jacob. Congratulations on uh, on everything here coming up. We're so excited we get to watch you this season and, of course, all of next year as well, too. But our latest Stonegate Homes Heart of the Team Award winner, Jacob Rathbone here, man. Congratulations. That, that's right. Jacob, you, you may not be the greatest in math, but you – but you exceeded the level being interviewed. Good job, young man. You, you rocked it. Yeah, I think Coach was kind of talking him like, he, he, good luck getting some awards, hey, Jacob, right? Jacob, 
don't forget you got some hardware there. Yeah. Um, that was a lot of fun. Always fun to have that we don't get to do that. We don't get yeah. to do that very often, uh, and uh, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. Thanks to uh, Paul and Christy Huff of uh, Stonegate Homes for, uh, for recognizing these fine athletes. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's about those that are out there participating, but they don't get the, rec- they don't get the highlights and everything, but, but they're doing everything right, and you know, very fitting that Jacob Rathbone gets it right out of the gate. And we've this is one of those awards that have turned into like yours and I's. This we love having the the heart of the team recognized here. And you think of some of the guys that have been here. I mean, we had Eric Hazard here representing for Page last year. And as Coach said, we could have five, six, seven of these guys up here to get this any given time. It's it's a special one. Well, this won't be the last time Paige is here this season. They're, uh, they're one of our, like I said earlier, they're one of our funnest uh, groups to have. And uh, they represent they represent Williamson County with class, and uh, they do it right. Well, uh, one of your favorite sports is coming up here, Garth. You are such an active, avid runner. I know you are. Um, we always pass through you about 5Ks, things like that. You know, uh, there's a great one, the Mercy Fall Classic coming up in downtown Franklin if you want to do a 5K. My wife just signed me up for the 10. Um, any interest by chance? You want to do the Labor Day setting like that? You had to go there. <laughs> Even with my bad back, <laughs> you had to go there. Well, we but have. Now, let, let's, no, 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 no. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there before these young, these young people get up here and talk about how they love to run. I, you know, hate is a strong word. I hate to run with a passion. So, therefore, I'm going to let them get all the glory of what it takes to get out there and run the 5K, the 3K, the half mile, the mile, whatever it is. Have at it because my rear end is not getting out there. Well, in the house tonight, we do have several Brentwood runners coming off a Saturday light setup here. So they're running at nighttime Saturday Now, that Saturday would be night. pretty cool. That's pretty neat. That's it pretty was cool. a heck of an experience I mean, here. that doesn't happen very yeah. often that you get to run under the lights. I mean, these football players Correct. play under the lights. They got to run under the lights. But I'm still not going to do that either. So, <laughs> you know, it still sounds pretty cool, but I'm not doing that either. Well, I think we should do a, a ladies first setup here. If we can get Lydia to come on up here. Um, again, the Brentwood girls cross country team represented here. We got Lydia Cromwell. She's been on the show before too, actually. I know. Um, Lydia, welcome, welcome back. Thank tell you. us, uh, tell us a little bit about Saturday night. This was under, under the lights. Mm-hmm. Saturday night run. It was the season opener. I'm pretty sure here yes, too, right? Yes. Okay. Um, what was, how how'd it go? Yeah, it's at the state championship course, so you know, got a nice little preview. Um, and it's always so fun, like racing at night. Like the crowd is amazing. Um, the energy is amazing. Just the whole vibe of the whole meet is just so fun. The uh, the target on the back of this Brentwood team as a whole, boys, girls, girls especially though. I mean, you guys are the four time defending state champs. That's just saying that out loud is pretty cool. But tell me about about that uh, that feeling, that target being uh, being being the team to beat. Right. It's definitely a lot of pressure, um, but we all just, like, work together so well and just, like, know the standards put, like, ahead of us. Um, and we just all, like, have such great, like, mindsets about the whole thing. We don't get too far ahead of ourselves. We just, like, work one race at a time to um, eventually get to, like, our big goals of the season. Like, especially at State, we just work um, so hard and know, like, that we have to, like, work so hard to get um, to reach our goals. In terms of, of getting to finally go out there and starting these competitions and starting these meets a little bit and getting things going here, break down this, uh, this team a little bit. I know you're one of the leaders out there, one of the veteran runners at the same time, too. I still got to mention, too, the, the JV girls. Got to give the shout out to them. They swept the competition, right? I mean, mm-hmm. top runners across the board mm-hmm. on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. Yes, our JV team was like one through seven. Um, top girls, too. The first two are freshmen. They, they're so good. Their first cross country race ever. Um, biggest debut. We're so proud of them. They did so well. Okay. Okay. This this team, though, tell us uh, tell us about the camaraderie a little bit and what makes this this group so special year after year. Oh yeah. So there's all of us are so close. Like JV varsity, all of us. Um, we get to run together every practice. You know, 
um, make so many friendships um, and like fact for like running you know it's not like any other sport where you actually like have like certain drills you have to do like certain like activities like we just get to go out and run and we can like talk to each other about anything um and it's just so nice because like that's where like the friendships actually start and we just like get so close together um get to know each other so well and that just like makes our team even stronger i see i see this uh I guess the, the training side, the build up to this a little bit, coming into the Saturday, kind of walk us through all the, all the work, everything that goes forward, because I know you'd run a non, you know, year round here, we're doing indoor, we're doing outdoor track, all those different things, but just kind of break down the, the, the build up to a cross country season. Yeah, so um, after track season in May, we get like a week break, and then we start training for cross country um, the first week of June, so we're training like June, July, um, and then, like, through the rest of the season, of course. Um, and, like, obviously, like, we start out, like, a little slower, like, lower mileage. And then, like, we build up um, and, like, start getting, like, more intense training, like, closer to the actual meets. Um, but, yeah, we just, like, make sure, like, our mindsets are, like, in it. We know what we're working towards. Um, each, like, run we do, workout we do is so intentional. How about, uh, I know we got a lot of the, uh, the football guys here in the crowd, too, thinking of this week, for example, here. It's supposed to be almost 100 degrees come Wednesday. Um, obviously, the heat is something here. In terms of running, in terms of training, how do you guys combat that? And, uh, you know, for example here, my wife's a, a di longtime distance runner. She's working on ultras and things like that. And I know she's listening and watching right now. But when you think of, you know, how to, how to beat the heat, oftentimes it's really early mornings, right? Mm -hmm. tell, us, tell us how. Yeah, so actually this week, um, this is the first time that I've ever had to do this, but we're having morning practices this week. So um, today we had practice at 5 a.m. We met in like the YM, or 5.30 a.m., sorry. We met in the uh, parking lot at the YMCA, and it was pitch black outside, and, you know, we just like had to do our workout this morning so early before school. Um, so the rest of this week, it's like 5.15, 5.30, um, just because after school, it's like too hot to be out there, and there's so many activities after school, like in the evenings, so like evening practice doesn't really work either, so yeah, it's crazy. My answer to that is you just don't do it. <laughs> I mean, period. But anyway, so running under the lights, that sounds pretty cool. Mm. Uh, how do you... I mean, do you train differently for that? I mean, are you just, is it the same approach? Uh, you run. Charles said you guys had the little lights on and everything. I mean, are you are you still able to pace yourself? I mean, was could you see really I mean, well? Relatively, yeah. Like, I mean, it's, like, basically the same, but it's a little harder to see. Sometimes you, like, can't really see where you're stepping, and there's, like, you know, roots in the ground. It gets kind of hard. Um, there was one part, like, in the woods, and, like, they put up little, like, twinkle lights so, like, we could kind of see a little better, but it didn't really help. But, you know, it's still fun, you know. Well, great way to start the season off. I mean, coming right out of the gate and, and winning the event. Uh, now, will that be the only under-the-lights event that you run all year? Um, actually, we're doing another night race in Georgia. Um, it's called Wingfoot. It's in a month, maybe. Um, so that'll be also now, have you ever ran that course? Mm -hmm. Two years ago, I think, we went there. Let's, uh, let's chat team set up here real quick before we get these guys coming up here. Um, a couple of these, uh, including you, we've seen a lot of these girls, but I think Aaliyah and Lauren kind of doing so well here, leading up front, too, and, and Rachel, too. But thinking of, of this team and, and the leadership you all have and that, that veteran feeling, I know we touched on that camaraderie a little bit, but I kind of want you just to to expand on those relationships because you guys train together, you compete together, you're always together, and uh, it just seems like that, that spells a, a championship feeling. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, um, a lot of the girls, we're just like like uh, like me, Rachel, Abby, Leah, Lauren, like, we're all like, like you know, junior, seniors, upperclassmen. Um, we can like, just like, know like the team like the team dynamics so well like so if like one of the younger girls is feeling down like obviously like we can like motivate them get them like back in the game um to know like where they are like motivate them to you know um like know that they're not only working for themselves but also working for like the team like each other um and just like having such great teammates to be leaders like alongside is just so powerful it's so amazing um and like like me rachel and abby like the three like varsity seniors have just like it's so amazing just to have them alongside me 
um, like every race, every practice. It's just so, so amazing to have that kind of support. Well, um, Coach Rob passed along these couple guys along here too mm -hmm. as well here. Uh, when it comes to these two, can you uh, maybe introduce us to these two young men before they get up here? Just tell us who, yeah, sure. who do we got here with us? Okay, Wyatt Hamilton, he's also a senior. And um, Color and Bree, he's a sophomore, so. Okay, yeah. okay. Got it. We're breaking our sophomore in here early tonight. But anyway, since I don't have a lot of questions <laughs> to ask, I'm going to let both of these young men come up. I'm going to go up here and slap Hazard on the back because he stepped out twice for a phone call. So step on up here, young man. Guys, welcome here again. We're chatting with the uh, Brentwood cross-country runners here. Um, we just had Lydia Cromwell, the, again, the four-time defending state champs. And, guys, Again, introduce yourselves here real quick. Let me pass these along here. Who uh, who do we got here? Uh, I'm Cutler Embry. I'm a sophomore. I'm Wyatt Hamilton. I'm a senior. Wyatt Cutler. Guys, thanks so much for uh, joining us here. We got a little bit of a, a taste of, of what that Saturday night was like. But Cutler, tell me at first here, just describe that, that atmosphere a little bit because there's, you know, there's a lot that goes in to any cross country meet here, but this was a all class division. You had 300 runners in the varsity race alone on the boys side, and you guys started at 9:20, 9:30 at night here. I mean, what was what was that atmosphere like? I mean, the atmosphere was really cool. It was our first 5K um, of the season, and the start the start line there were so many guys. I mean, there was probably 200 people there, and um, we were on the very inside, so we really had to get out fast. And the atmosphere was crazy. There were so many fans. Uh, like, when you're at the start line, there's no, like, boxes reserved, right? So you got to go in there and kind of push your way around to get a position. And uh, we got there kind of late, so we got the very inside box. And, uh, like, five minutes before the race, there's just a bunch of people lining up the start line. They're kind of cutting us off, you know? So officials had to come in and push everyone back and... It was kind of stressful leading up to it, and uh, they were like 20 minutes late, so just shaking out, like leaving some anxiety, you know. But it like it builds up and builds up until that gun goes off, you know. Well, that was one of the things too. So my wife and I were there, kind of we were watching. Obviously, we tried to catch you guys at certain turns and stuff, but just feeling that atmosphere a little bit. And like you said, the the guys race. I mean. You guys were warmed up on the starting line, ready to go, and then we just had to wait for another 10 or 15 easy. How do you get back in that mindset of like, hey, we just we still got to go out and, and take care of business here? Well, um, you know, you're in that mindset when you get up to the line, and then it's just time goes on and on, and you're kind of getting out of it, but then you got to, like, remind yourself, like, we're still got, we still got to run this 5K. We still got to go all out, and... I even had uh, one of my teammates slapping each other's backs, like, get into it, get into it, man. We still got to do this. And uh, you just got to, like, focus. Just stay focused on what the end goal is. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of zoned out for a second. But like Wyatt said, we all had to um, come in together as a group and lock back in. And um, basically, that's what we did. Um, when you think about the the build up to this one and you know we we kind of touched on it with Lydia there too but the amount of of teams of runners here I mean you think of that great Knox Catholic team coming back um when you see that kind of competition everybody coming together regardless of classification here in state just you know describe that competition level here because we were we were loaded up on that course uh Saturday night well, I'll tell you, it's really all about confidence and being confident in, like, the training prior. And you just got to, like, believe that the training you've done has prepared you properly for this race. And uh, it really, when you're confident that you can run well, um, just a lot of stress is, like, washed off, you know, regardless of competition that's there and all these people. We're definitely up there with one of the best teams. So it's you get a kind of arrogant feeling, but, you know, you still got to stay, like, to the ground like you still got to race and push hard yeah like what he said um basically for me I, I i love like all the fans all the teams like i really like thrive off that it makes me like want to try harder and run faster and so the environment really helps that's one of the things that 
trying to break down that atmosphere. I mean, the, from the DJ to the lights to the lines of fans across the entire course, really, except for maybe that, that far, farther spot. There's still some coaches running out there. But thinking of, uh, of just running in the crowds like that, I mean, that just has to, that has to be the kind of feel you guys like here, too. But a second place showing. I mean, break down how this, how this team did and, and how you guys did, too. Well, I'll tell you, um, we got second, so I'll be honest with you. I think that was mainly because of me. I believe we could have won, but they, just, they say I make up excuses, whatever. I had a stitch with about a mile left to go. Really bad stitch. It just wouldn't go away. Say what you want. It was bad, and that's the reason that I was exceptionally slow um, coming in through the finish. And uh, I believe we could have won that if I was in a... You know proper condition but um yeah if if he did what he was supposed to do you know he's a senior i'm a sophomore like he should be able to beat me in a race and um i was 15 seconds faster than him um i had my pr i did what i had to do but you know maybe next time hey let's look at the prs buddy i'm still 30 seconds faster than you senior well i like i like this banter between the guys i mean you guys are pushing each other all the time here too obviously then huh um Lydia kind of explained a little bit of the, the girls' side of the camaraderie of that team. You guys break down, break down this group here. What do, we, what do we see from the Brentwood boys' side? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, we're all friends. We've all been friends since middle school. I mean, this guy's a bit newer, you know, being an underclassman and all. But, you know, we're all friends until, you know, that gun goes off. It's, competition is rough with us. Even in workouts, we want to beat each other, be faster, be stronger than the other guy. And it really pushes um, all of us as a whole to be faster and stronger. And uh, it just, you know, builds this competitive atmosphere. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think the good thing with the girls team is that their times are so close. They can, like, during races, they can be in packs. I think what separates us is, like, we have Callahan, who's, like, a different level. And then we have Payne, Wyatt. And then in workouts, I have to keep up with them. So that's really, really competitive and that drives me to be better. Yeah, you mentioned some of those guys there too, and it, there's just the the whole team supporting one another. I mean, we talk boys, we talk girls here, but you all seem like you're supportive and you train and work together, and the coaches are working together, all those kind of things. Can you explain that that atmosphere just in cross country at Brentwood High? Yeah. Well, um, you have to be friends with people. You have to like have fun being there because. If you're not having fun running cross country, it's just gonna make grinding out those workouts a whole lot harder. And you're just not gonna wanna push. So like, you just gotta keep it fun on those easy um, chill days where you're just running like five or six miles or even on long runs. You, you gotta make jokes, you gotta like have community, you know, you gotta have fun. Otherwise, you're just gonna, it's not, you're not gonna push yourself and you're not gonna do as well as you could. So we really like to keep it pretty chill and fun. And then, but then, really serious when it comes to race days the uh the average training setup here walk us through uh i guess any given practice or a given night or i mean given week mileage wise things like that what are what are we at right now as uh as the season gets underway here so right now i think um last week we have a we had a down week um less mileage and then our coaches um he does three weeks of up so i think we're at like 40 miles on our up weeks then like lower 30s um yeah yeah somewhere around there i think next week is a down week because we have i'm pretty sure we have voils not this weekend but the weekend after that we're going to voils there so i think we're having a down week that week getting prepared for voils all right well um like you said i think i was that was the next thing i was going to ask i was pretty sure it was voils coming up as the next full competition for you guys right but when we are uh kind of just breaking down um, just just the way the county works, the way, you know, the competition across the board here from, a, a, you know, a Ravenwood to a Page, things like that. What have you guys seen so far that you think about in terms of cross country for the county here? Who are some of the biggest competition that you see? Um, I know, you know, Asher had the great showing there, pushing Keegan for a while. Um, but when you think about the county, who kind of jumps out to you guys? Um, I'd say independence. That's where Asher goes. Um, he's he's really good. That sticks out to me. 
Um, as far as like in the future, there's some guys in my grade that are really fast at Ravenwood. Um, so that's who I've been thinking about a lot. And yeah, I'd say independence is our big rival. Like a lot of individuals is really what I'm looking at right now, personally. Um, I've never really focused on teams. I, I leave that to my teammates to just be like, okay, catch the dude in that jersey. I'm just like, okay, I'll go do that. Um, any, any stories, anything kind of fun you want to share? You guys talk about having some fun all the time here, but give us a little taste. How do we keep, keep running fun? How do we keep jokes up? What, what are we doing here? Well, uh, usually at a Saturday Night Fever, usually at that course, there's a tree hanging over the lake there, and almost every time we climb that tree and we jump off after the race and just have a little party, you know, just jumping in the water, swimming, having fun. And then um, during the week, during training and stuff, we'll just, uh, on easy runs, just laugh, make jokes, throw rocks in the creek or something. Just anything to, like, relax and just recover on those easy run days. Um, well, I mentioned uh, my wife being a runner. Uh, she's got me roped into running the upcoming uh, Mercy Classic in Franklin as well, too. I'll be doing the 10K. She's trying to make me do the 10K and 5K back-to-back. -back. I don't know why she does that. But uh, tell, us, tell us, myself, maybe some of us just trying to stay with it here a little bit, maybe some, some training tips, some thoughts about race days, things like that. What do you guys say? Well, if you're trying to run fast and trying to run, you got to run consistently. Being consistent is the main thing. You always have to be consistent because if you're not consistent, you're not going to build up that aerobic base, that training that you need to run fast. And, um, and then stay, also staying hydrated, staying hydrated on those race days. But um, when it comes to the actual race, just, you know, go at a pace you think you can hold. And, like, if you feel better, push harder, push harder, go faster, and uh, make yourself proud. Yeah, building off what he said um, in the race, like leave leave it all out there, no regrets. Um, I definitely think consistency is key. Um, diet, sleep, but especially just getting your training in. Well, I might uh, might be lacking a little bit on that front, but hey, we're gonna we're gonna see what happens here. And, and you know, I was m motivated to push here, so we'll see what goes on, guys. Is there uh, anything else you'd like to add about this season, about just what we're going to see in these coming weeks here as you guys really kind of get into the meat of this? I'll tell you, we're looking at state right now. We're looking to winning state this year, and we've come up short several years, but um, I think we can get some pretty good average times and uh, really get up there and hopefully win this year. Yeah, I think if we can all stay healthy, that's the main thing. In the past couple years, like you said, um, we've fallen short, but... Our main runner, like Bobby Patinas last year, he was hurt. Uh, Keller was hurt. So if we can all stay healthy, we can, we can definitely win state. That's the goal. Well, guys, uh, looking forward to following, of course, too. Congratulations on, on getting things rolling here. It was a really special atmosphere to watch you guys compete on Saturday. Looking forward to this next one and through the season. Guys, thanks so much for joining us here on the World Cup yeah. Sports Power Hour. Thank you. Thank you again. Visiting with the Brentwood cross-country teams here. Guys, thank you so much. Best of luck through the rest of the season here. Again, we're at Tony's Eat and Drink. This is our spot every Monday night, the Wilco Sports Power Hour, live here at Tony's Eat and Drink. We had the Page football team. We had uh, Lydia and, and, and um, Wyatt Cutler hanging out here, so always pretty special. Garth, this is, uh, this is just kind of our Monday night tradition. It's always fun. Yeah, we're just hanging out uh, with uh, some coaches and some athletes and some great families and uh, great food. So, uh, you know, we need, uh, uh, you know, everyone to come out and join us and uh, enjoy this food here at Tony's. But, uh, you know, great crowd again tonight, uh, and, and we're thankful for that. But uh, before we go away, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay, okay. Uh, let's do some pick real quick. <laughs> All, All right. right. All right. Who you got Friday night? Uh, let's start with uh, FRA Franklin. Well, uh, being at that Franklin game, we were talking just prior. So going back to uh, some Friday night lights here, thinking of the, the matchup, I, I kind of think Franklin can still maintain this. I almost am rooting for it, but I also am thinking there might be a letdown. I'm going with Franklin. I'm going to be a homebody. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Let's uh, forget about Paige being in the house tonight. Uh, let's let's go, Paige. Paige Indy. Who do you think there? Oh man, well, I was at the the last meeting here, and that was a special one in terms of just how fun it was out there. And maybe not fun for Coach Rathbone here a little bit, but. I think the uh, the Page Boys can come out pretty easily. It's in Rudderville as well, too. This is a scrappy indie team, but I think Page comes out on top. Okay. Uh, Centennial Summit. This was the one. Remember, we were talking. Uh, this is uh, the Summit Boys coming off a win against Spring Hill. I thought that score was going to be a little more decisive against the Raiders there. Um, and then, obviously, watching Centennial, seeing some of that talent come back here. Um, I'm going Cougars for sure on that one. Okay. All right. Uh, trying to remember some of the other matchups. <laughs> uh, but uh, I know, let's see. Who am I missing? I'm, I'm missing Ravenwood. I'm missing Brentwood. Brentwood's got Brentwood Academy. Yeah. All right. Who do you think there? Well, um, thinking about that CPA Brentwood Academy game on Saturday, uh, I think that showed me a little bit. You got a new coach, NBA, there with Coach Wade. I think that the BA boys can come out on top. Again, this has a lot to do with the hometown setting here, or home field setting there. Neighborhood battle. I'm thinking Eagles over Brentwood. Okay. All right. I'll second that one. I'll second that one. Uh, we've got uh, BGA at Ma Maplewood. So... This is uh, watching what BGA did. Caden Maribel threw for six touchdowns, 68 points in opening week in a big win uh, against the Knoxville Web team. I'm thinking BGA goes to 2-0. and Good start for a new coach. Uh, let's see. Ravenwood has – who do they have? They're going to Cane Ridge. And, you know, coming off that kind of win they had over at Alcoho Alcoa, I think it's hard to not keep that momentum going. And, you know, talking to those kids, talking to Coach Hester, they've had so many of these region games circled, but they want to take on those really tough teams, and I think they're all about trying to go unbeaten in these non-district matchups. And they get to play in Oakland, I think, in week seven or eight. These guys want to keep rolling, and I think they can. Yeah, impressive uh, how they're, they're scheduling some of those teams uh, that uh, are definitely going to be you know, favorites near the end of the season. So I think I, we hit most of them. We we'll got uh, the only other ones Nolensville, there. Yeah. Yep. And CPA at the same time, too. So Nolensville winning uh, on a field goal at Rockville. And that was one that I had picked wrong, actually, last week. I but, picked that one correctly. <laughs> thank you very much. They got a really tough Antioch team coming in here, too. But they are at Nolensville. So now I'm jumping ship, and I got to go Knights. Okay. The only, the only so far, then CPA uh, at Pearl. This is kind of the circled game, probably in the mid-state when you think about it here. Yep. This is a special matchup of state champions going head-to-head. -head. CPA obviously was prepped up. They were at home, knocked off Brentwood Academy to kick things off. Pearl, so tough. Engel and Coach, uh, you know, I can never say his name, but the two of them go so far back. This is the kind of battle they go for. It was 15 to 11 last year. Pearl, the only loss on CPA's uh, resume in 2023. I think CPA can pull it out, especially carrying the momentum from week one. I match your picks other than uh, I chose FRA over Franklin, uh, and that's the only one we differ on there, but uh, the rest of them, uh, I'll match your picks on that. So, uh, anyway, another big interesting week. Some very important games that stack up uh, to see just just where these where these teams fit up uh, mm -hmm. early in the season. So, um, look forward to Page at Indy. I think they can get that revenge back uh, mm -hmm. as well. So, uh, thankful to all of our sponsors. Thankful to all of our guests that were here tonight. And uh, you know, you got any parting words? Well, again, just want to reiterate about how the Wilco Sports Power Hour, we're always up here. We're always on the Williamson Herald Facebook page, Gateway Tire and Auto Facebook page. We're going to have uh, different little clips, segments coming out all throughout social media, but you can find us on Spotify now, your iTunes podcast, things like that. We're out and about. We're all over on the social media. Just keep that support coming. And then, uh, you know, of course, our great sponsors here, our hosts here, Tony's Eat and Drink, Tim Thompson, Premier Realtors, Gateway Tire and Service, Toyota Cool Springs, Stonegate Homes, Matthews Team Sports, Trucking for Cure Tennessee, 
Southern Trophy and John Mayer Builders. I mean, we got the best support, and we just want to keep delivering that product and giving all the opportunity for these kids and these coaches to uh, to be heard and to be featured. Well, that's why we do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for these young people and these great programs here in Williamson County. So uh, we appreciate our viewers, our listeners, uh, and check us out on Spotify and YouTube and the podcast that I'm sure Charles will be sending out here uh, next week when he finds time. He doesn't really sleep. Uh, he, can't, he, doesn't, he doesn't have time to sleep. So anyway, thanks, everybody. We'll see everybody next week. Have a great week. Thank you all. Tim Thompson, Premier Realtors, a local realty company that has been in operation for more than 40 years. Tim has the personal motto of no excuses, just results. And that's the approach and superior service you'll receive at Tim Thompson, Premier Realtors. Allow Tim and his team the privilege of assisting you in accomplishing your real estate dreams. Check them out at timthompsonpremierrealtors.com.